Salutations to respected viewers. I am George from Ireland and uh, this video is going to be about Hiberno English. So in case you don't know, um, Hiberno English is the type of English which is spoken in Ireland. Now obviously there's some variety within Ireland because we're, we're not tiny. Ireland, I just think, well we're 300 miles north to south, about 200 east to west at the widest point. We have coming up from 7 million people our populations close to finally recovering from the famine 170 years on. So Hibernia is the Latin name for Ireland. That's why I call it that. Because if you say Irish English, people think, what? It could, it could be mistaken to be the Irish language or something like that. But Hiberno English is what I prefer to call it to avoid that confusion. Because there is an Irish language which, was, which is unrelated to English. Commonly called Gaelic by some people. But if you actually are Irish, you'd simply call the Irish language Irish while speaking English or else Gwaelaga, if you're speaking in Irish. But I'm telling you about Hiberno English. So I'm gonna give you examples of a few um, of our words, a few Irish words from the Irish language were actually used in the English language, as well as somewhat unusual uh, English words or forms of English that we use in Hiberno English. So there's garçon, for instance, to mean boy, but uh, I wonder if that's borrowed from French like garçon. Um, Donnybrook, which is me meaning a fight. Um, Donnybrook is also an area of Dublin, and I wonder it was notorious for uh, fisticuffs. Amadorn, that means um, a fool, if someone's called an Amadorn. Um, Cayley, that's a party. Well, uh, sometimes people say, oh, it's a kitchen party, like in somebody's house, but they say that one's Scotland as well. I don't think it necessarily means a particular form of dancing. We say a fla to mean a festival, or you can say fesh, ardesh, meaning high festival. A party conference could be an ardesh. Ard, on its end, just means high. Rawmesh, which could mean um, long, useless speech. Just uh, waffle, or, um, but like, like rambling. Um, now, uh, saying burn up whale, the gap of danger. Like in Irish legends, there was this narrow valley, which, is the, which was the gateway to Ulster, the hills around it weren't that high, but that was the gap of danger, Bernard Well. Um, saying Colleen, we don't usually say that, meaning girl or young woman. Um, Irish has got genders, and oddly the word for girl is actually neuter. Sorry, I mean, no, actually masculine, even worse. But apart from that, the neuter, the, the, sorry, the genders actually make sense. So saying lads, now, to my mind, lads is strictly only males, obviously that's an English word, uh, English argo we use while speaking. English in Ireland. The others were words directly taken from the Irish language and sometimes peppering Hiberno English because people blend languages occasionally. But uh, people, I have heard people use lads to mean including groups including women as well. I think if the group was exclusively female, one wouldn't say that. Okay, boreen meaning lane from the Irish word bore as in road. I shan't tell you the spellings of all these things because in Irish we have quite a few silent letters. We don't have the, the TH sound for instance. <laughs> We have a fodder, which is like an acute accent, making the, the I a long E sound, for instance. Um, uh, you can put it over I as well, but I shan't get into that. Banshee. Um, banshee, well, it's literally fairy woman, but it's more like a witch. It's definitely bad, a banshee haunting you. Um, so people swear quite casually in Ireland and doesn't appear to be as venomous as in other codes of English. And uh, saying feck, if you just change the U to an E, you somehow bodlerized it, I'm not sure. I remember um, some barmaid not liking where we were sitting years ago and telling us to feck off. Now I thought, but if you actually said fuck, what do you really mean? That would be exceedingly offensive. But does that somehow soften it or just obviate any sense of insult? I don't think so, you're not fooling me. Um, so uh, that's that. Um, I thought, well, don't have the minced oath. If you want to swear, say it. Otherwise, don't, uh, don't semi-swear. Now, I know people will in Kerry, for example, are notorious for their, for their bad language, but um, often there's no malice behind it. It's just quite a low-key thing. I remember I had a colleague from Kerry, and I told this Kerryman something which was surprising, and he said, fuck off. Um, not wishing to be offensive at all, but just that was his way of saying, wow, I don't believe you. Um, but I, I should have explained to him, 
in the rest of the Anglosphere, that's an outrageous thing to say. And people wouldn't realise that he's not intending to upset them. Or I remember Kerriman saying about Jackie Healy Ray, this politician, he's a cute whore. Whore as in a pronunciation of whore. Um, not to say that this man is actually a gigolo, but means that he's sneaky or he's cunning. Um, other words like gurrier, which again is um, to do with class prejudice. It's an urban working class person, or possibly from the underclass. Working class actually have a job. But uh, or what's, what's another one a bit like that? Um, Traveller in Ireland means people from a particular um, community who were itinerant, sometimes they're settled people, but they were uh, almost an indigenous ethnic minority. It doesn't mean someone who takes a rucksack to go around Southeast Asia for three months. Um, Kulchi, that means somebody from the countryside. Um, uh, kip, kip means an untidy place or an undesirable place, like a, the, the, the flat or, even, you know, or a town that you think is dreadful. So there was Kipur in Dublin. I don't know what it's to do with that district's name. Um, Jackine, meaning a Dubliner. There's theories that um, when Edward VII visited, um, or Queen Victoria, the um, Dubliners waved the British flag as in the Union Jack. So Ean, the suffix Ean makes anything small, little jacks. Or, you know, because Jack Tar was a symbol of um, the United Kingdom, or particularly Great Britain. And it was a pejorative thing to say in Ireland that somebody was wanting to say, believe that being Irish and British were compatible. Calling someone a West Brit, that's someone who's either a unionist or insufficiently nationalist. If you're not anglophobic, you're a West Brit. Um, so that's intended to be opprobrious, but uh, I've reclaimed it. Yeah, I am a West Brit and elated to be one. Uh, Jacks to mean the uh, lavatory. I'm just trying to think what are other good ones. Ah, yous, that's you plural. We also say ye, occasions a bit of Elizabethan English in, in, in Ireland, because I suppose well, we've had the English language in Ireland a little bit since the 12th century. But when did it become the language of the majority? Certainly by the 19th century it was, but maybe in the 16th century it really began to take off. Significant numbers of um, English immigrants come again. Previous English immigrants had gradually been um, galicized. Um, there we are. So you can say use, particularly in Dublin and its environs, people say that one. In Scotland, likewise, people say use to mean you more than plural, like the to vu distinction. They're saying get out of it, as in go away, um, get out of here, but saying get out of it. Um, but um, pronouncing it like get out of it, especially if you're a Dubliner. So obviously there's some variety from a Belfast accent to a Dublin accent to a Cork accent, the Irish Midlands. Notably in the Irish Midlands, People like accentuate it differently and said to say midlands, laying the stress on the second syllable, not the first. So Ireland's four provinces, in case you don't know, the western one is, is Connacht, pronounced Connacht, not Connaught. I've heard some English people who think that it's a silent GH in that word, but it's not. And this Connemara is part of Galway. I knew some people erroneously believe Connemara is a county. It's not. It's a section of a county. Counties were subdivided into baronies. Um, because, you know, a long time ago, there'd be one count for each county, uh, but um, uh, an earl and count, they're equivalent. In English-speaking countries, an earl would be the title, but it was in Germany or Romania. Speaking English, we'd say that title is count, is equivalent, and a baron for each barony. But the system rapidly broke down. There could be more than one baron per barony. There could be some baronies without a baron. There could be more than one count or earl per county. Some counties wouldn't have any earl or count and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, um, a margrave ruling a margravate. That's why there's a mark as in a huge area of land as in Denmark or the marches, like the border areas, like the Welsh marches and so on, or Le Marche in Italy. But I'm getting a bit off the, uh, off the topic. Um, so an example of Elizabethan English, have you 50 euro rather than do you have 50 euro? Another thing is, is since we started using euros, being very continental, continental, saying euro, plural, not euros. So ye as another you plural, which is obviously in, in um, uh, standard British English has fallen out of usage very long time ago, over a century ago. Even when Rudyard Kipling was writing ye in his, in his poesy, that was anachronistic. Um, to say uh, that it's to be sarcastic, you might say, I did on my eye. But again, this is quite old fashioned, meaning I definitely did not. I did on my tail, tail being um, 
sort of a minced oath for your bottom. So I certainly did not. Like, um, did you let her into the house? I did on my tail. It means absolutely not. A bit like saying my foot in other forms of English. Let's go. Well, in Hiberno English saying, come on, come on, so, particularly in Cork. Come on, so. Like in the Cork City accent, it's a high-pitched, whiny accent. Certainly the vernacular form of it. Um, your hole, meaning your anus, but often they're not really talking about that. Um, they're just being rude, generally. Um, but shut your hole could mean your mouth, obviously. It could mean another orifice. Ah, in Cork, I'm after whatever. It means I have just done something. I'm after being insulted by a terrible man. It means I have just been insulted by a terrible man. Um, uh, let me see. Reaffirmation. Okay, reaffirmation is when we you say something and then you confirm it immediately, say, so we did. We became good friends, so we did. But that's an Ulster thing, particularly the eastern half of Ulster. And uh, curiously, it's also said, said in Coatbridge, Scotland. Uh, the town of Coatbridge has got a large Irish community and people who were several generations descended from Irish people, as in they haven't ne maybe never been to Ireland. It was their great-grandparents who came from Ireland or something. Some of them in Coatbridge are also saying, so we did afterwards. Okay, saying arse to mean your buttocks or airs is it sometimes pronounced. Americans would say ass. Um, so uh, that one, so it's a bit like uh, standard British English, but we pronounce it more like airs rather than arse. Incidentally, I don't speak Hiberno English, but I'm familiar with that code. I remember my driving instructor one time talking about uh, a motorist who's too close behind us saying, this fella seems to be having a love affair with our heirs. Okay, so um, saying fella, um, I'm meaning man, idiot, that's idiot. Just trying to think of other examples of it. Ah, we tend to say on holidays. Notice the plural, holidays, whereas standard British English would say on holiday. She is on holiday. We, we don't say vacation. Um, so they're Gaelic games, as in... Um, uh, uh, hurling and Gaelic football. Someone who plays hurling is a hurler. Um, it's a bit like field hockey, or just hockey, if you're speaking British English, with these sticks. The sticks are a little bit different and that leather ball, the slitter. I won't go into the rules of it. I've never played it, actually. But so, um, and a hurley is the stick that it's played with, just like the surname of Liz Hurley. A hurler, a hurler in the ditch, and again, this is very old-fashioned, is someone who just watches and critiques and claims to be an expert but doesn't participate, saying so-and-so is a hurler in the ditch. But again, that would be a criticism because someone, well, is just looking on. And yes, it's easy to disparage others if you're not taking part yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, in Ireland, football could mean Gaelic football, right? And again, it's not what's internationally known as football. Strangely, okay, Gaelic football, I won't go into it too much, but it's formalized 1884 with the foundation of the Gaelic Athletic Association. So you have a ball, a spherical ball, that uh, people can solo, as in kick up to themselves, run with for three step, steps, they can do a hand pass, not actually allowed to throw it, have to hit it with the heel of their hand and things like that. Um, so get it into the goal for three points, over the bar for one point. I won't go into all the rules of that, I've only played it a very few times. But anyway, in, in the Republic of Ireland, you say football, you might well be meaning that, Gaelic football. Um, as opposed to soccer. So in the United States and Australia, soccer is what the rest of the world calls football. The trouble is, in Northern Ireland, if you say football, you might really mean football as in soccer, but you might mean Gaelic football if in the GAA. Um, but it's, 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 it all depends on context. You're talking about cross-channel football, as in over in England, we're watching their teams, we might just say football rather than soccer. Confusing, I know. Now, in schools, quite often the person in charge is called a principal, not saying headmaster or headmistress so much. People in the Republic of Ireland do the leaving cert as their school leaving exam at the age of 18. Obviously, cert short for certificate. Now, there are all sorts of um, Irish language signs you'll see in the roads, like Giel Schli, as in give way. But if you're familiar with the road signs in Great Britain, they'll be all the same um, shape and colour. So you can get that from that. That obviously means give way. Because we're a bilingual country. Irish is the first national language according to the 1937 constitution the republic of ireland irish has got some official status in northern ireland too but the thing is in in the republic of ireland we use the second official language english almost all the time 
um, but then that Gielschli is not translated. You just expect it isn't expected to know. College meaning um, university usually, whereas in Great Britain, college could mean a secondary school. Although college in the Republic of Ireland, it can mean a professional association, like the, the Irish College of General Practitioners or something like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, St. Stephen's Day, that's the 26th of December. Um, in Great Britain, that would be uh, Boxing Day. Um, so the Wren boys go around uh, in Ireland on St. Stephen's Day, um, well, dressed up in funny, uni uh, you know, costumes and singing people's houses, the Wren, the Wren, the king of all birds, telling the tale of how he flew up um, higher than any other bird to see who was the king of birds. He tricked the eagle by resting on the eagle's back and getting off the eagle's back and flying just a little bit higher than the eagle could, and then he, that's why he's the king of the birds because our feathered friends held this competition to see who could fly the highest and therefore be king over all feathered beasts um, and collecting money for charity. Part of this mummery, sometimes dressing up as women even. Uh, crack. Now, even a lot of people are not Irish will know crack. Um, it's spelled C-R-A-I-C. I'm usually not spelling these words, but not the usual spelling of crack, meaning fun. And many Irish pubs will, will offer crack August kill. Fun and music is what it is. Or in West Cork some years ago, they used to say something as gas, as in fun, energetic. I don't think that, that one's uh, in usage very much anymore. There's Balrón, as in that's a special musical instrument. Okay, it's got um, a DH in the middle. So a lot of people who are not Irish pronounce it Bod Haran. Well, how are they supposed to know? Um... Yeah, the one thing in Ireland that has never been said um, is top of the morning to you. I don't know where on earth that came from, but there's a lot of paddy whackery and stage Irish people imagining that one said. Um, so uh, a few political terms, the Oroctus, which means our legislature, Doyle Aaron, which is like Irish parliament, but that really only refers to the lower chamber. There's the upper cham chamber, which is the Senate. I suppose you could say Shannad if you really want to pronounce it the Irish way. Um, and Taoiseach as in the Prime Minister. But um, even speaking the English language, people tend to use the Irish word. Or the plural Tishi, um, the President, you can say Uchtaron, which is like Chieftain. Um, um, Oris an Uchtaron. When Elizabeth II came to Dublin at the state dinner, um, um, in, in Dublin Castle, she um, addressed the president as Uchtaron. One of my English friends didn't know what that was. So a bit unusual in English to use the Irish word, which is, which is chieftain, because of course, when we became, most of Ireland became an independent country, well, what we're we gonna call our head of state, what, it, what is that in Irish? We don't really have a word for president, chieftain is the equivalent, we'll do that one. So uh, that's about it. Um, anyway, it's uh, scintillating to see how we've borrowed some Irish words and use them in Hiberno English, just like English occasionally use words of Irish origin, um, such as brogue and, well, other ones escape me right now. So that's Hiberno English.